Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on expressing a sum of sinusoids as a single sinusoid. And just like that title is a bit of a mouthful, I'm going to be upfront with you. This is a bit of a, a weighty example that we're going to do here today. So I expect that you'll take some good notes and bring any questions to me as soon as possible. So let's start by, um, before I try to explain what that title means, let me just give you this um, scenario. Let's compare these three sums of sinusoids. And I'll remind you that when we, when we use the word sinusoid, we're not just talking about the sine wave, but cosine waves also count as sinusoids. So you see that in each of these three cases, we've got two sinusoids, one a sine and the other a cosine wave, being added to each other. And we notice that they've got various amplitudes there. Now, just to, uh, to make a point, I decided to make, in all cases, I made the, uh, the amplitudes add up to seven. So one and six add up to seven, and so do four and three, and so do five and two. Um, obviously, that doesn't have to be the case, but I chose to make it the case for this example. So I ask you to, to imagine what do you think that would look like if we added um, these sinusoids as, as shown. Um, and you could, you could type that into your calculator, uh, but I'm just going to bring it up here in GeoGebra and one by one show that g of x looks like that. And maybe you're surprised, maybe you're not, that the result is a sinusoid as well. Um, so, so it is for h of x and j of x as well. They're all, in all three cases, the sum turned out to give us a sinusoid as well. Now let me just show you something real quickly, that if these had different frequencies, um, and I'll remind you what I mean by that. Uh, remember the frequency and the period are, are determined by what goes on inside these parentheses. So I would say these all have the same frequencies, but if you were to have a case where you had one of the frequencies um, did not match the other frequency, notice that by, by putting that two in there, that's going to change the B value, which affects the frequency, right? So if I go over to GeoGebra and I type in a, a two there, you're going to notice that all of a sudden we have something that is not a sinusoid. Now, it is periodic, it does repeat itself, but it's definitely not a sinusoid. The amplitude, if you could even call it that, goes up and down. It varies on the bottom half of the graph. So let me undo that. Um, go back to just um, the sinusoids here. And I want to point out that even though these are all sinusoids, and even though the amplitudes individually added up to seven in each case, notice that in these three cases, the amplitudes of the sums vary. Um, so the amplitude of the red graph, g of x, is clearly the biggest, somewhere around six. It looks like it's a little bit higher than six. The amplitude of the green graph, the second one, h of x, um, is the smallest amplitude of the three, and the blue is in the middle. And notice that they've all been phase shifted as well. Whether you try to compare these sums to, to either the basic sine wave or the basic cosine wave, notice that none of these graphs pass through the origin like a basic sine wave would, and none of the graphs are centered along the, the y-axis like a basic cosine would. So whether you try to compare these sums to either basic sine or basic cosine, they, they've definitely been phase shifted, in other words, horizontally translated left or right in some way. So, our goal for this video is to uh, not only prove and demonstrate that all three of these, that, that we'll always get sinusoids when we um, add sines and cosines of the same frequency, but we want to find what is the, the equation for these sums. What is the single equation? If I wanted to combine these two into a, a, and the result is a single sinusoid, what is that single combined equation? So, the key to this is going to be these uh, two identities introduced recently, the sum and difference identities. So let's jump into an example. I want to express g of x, as shown here, as a sinusoid in the form of our standard sinusoid. Now, I'm leaving open the option of doing a, a, a cosine wave as well, although I'm going to go with the sine wave for this example. And I'll let you consider how I would do things differently if I'm going to do the cosine wave. So again, two sinusoids being added up, we want to express it as a single phase-shifted sinusoid. I hope the goal there is clear. 
All right, so since I've chosen to go with the sine version of sinusoid, I'll bring up this sine uh, of a sum or difference formula and um, remind you that the plus or minus is the way we interpret that, is that I could have minus signs there. But notice that if I have minus signs there, I want you to start right now recognizing sort of a parallel here, that we've got something times sine x something times cosine x. And notice that in this formula, we've got something times sine of an angle, albeit in a reversed order, and something times a cosine of that same angle. So already we're seeing a bit of a, a, a parallel here in, in how this formula is going to play a part. And because this is a plus up here, um, I want to use the other version of this uh, formula. I want to use the sum version. So let me get rid of these differences and bring the sum version up here. Again, that's the clue. If this up here had been a minus sign, I would have wanted to have a minus sign here and here as well. So I want you to be very clear on how we're making these decisions here so that you can adjust if you encounter a different scenario. All right, so let's continue with those parallels. I'm going to rewrite g of x in a way that even more closely mirrors this formula here. Uh, so again, g of x equals, and I'm going to start by just rearranging the order here. I'm going to put sine of x and followed by a 1 plus cosine of x followed by a 6. And that is the same as what I wrote here, just expressed slightly differently. And in my formula up here, just to make it absolutely as clear as can be, I'm going to replace all the big A's with X's. Again, really trying to make the formula look like the problem posed in front of us. Now, you can probably foresee that our, our next goal is we, we need to somehow take this 1 and the 6 and somehow envision it, look at it as a cosine and a sine, respectively. So here's the part where I just, please pay close attention, replay if need to, pause, let it sink in if need be. This is where students often get lost. I'm going to remind myself that cosine is adjacent, an adjacent side of some triangle over a hypotenuse, and sine is opposite of that same triangle over a hypotenuse. And I say same triangle because in both cases we're dealing with the same angle B. And so I want to start envisioning that 1 as an adjacent side of some triangle and that 6 as the opposite side of that same triangle. So off to the side, I'm going to draw a triangle that has an adjacent side of 1 and an opposite side of 6 and use our Pythagorean theorem to determine that the hypotenuse is going to be root 37. And just to give this a name, um, you know, let's go ahead and go with B. Let's call this big B, and you can hopefully see why I chose that. It's because that's what's in our formula. All right? Um, so if I really want these to be this cosine of B and the sine of B respectively, I need to have these be over a hypotenuse. So I'm going to put these over root 37. And um, this one as well, over root 37. Now I can't just put those in there because I want to. Uh, um, notice that we have two terms on this side of the equation, and I've divided them both by root 37. Um, so I'm going to divide this single term, I guess I'll call it, on the left side by root 37 as well. Um, notice it would be a mistake. If you tried to do the same thing to the sine and the cosine, that would be a mistake. Because, uh, again, this is all a single term, so you don't want to divide it by root 37 twice. Um, that's a point that some students get, have trouble on. So if you didn't fully understand that explanation, put a little note and ask me about it later. But now that I've got my hypotenuse that I wanted on the bottom, I can effectively just substitute in here. I can say that this equals sine of x and 1 over root 37. Whoops. 
1 over root 37, isn't that cosine of b according to my triangle at the left here? Uh, again, this is where I need to pause, observe, let that sink in if you didn't get that. 1 over 37, root 37, is cosine of b according to my, my picture over here on the left. And likewise, 6 over root 37, that is sine of b according to the picture over on the left. 6 over root 37 is sine of this angle b. And I've still got g of x over root 37 here. But let me scroll down at this point a little bit. And let's get this out of the way. According to my formula, according to our grand formula, this is the same as this. And notice that I now have that right side achieved. We made it look just like the formula. So according to this formula, I can replace all of this with this because they are equivalent. So let's do that. Let's call this sine. We've replaced these multiple sinusoids with a single sinusoid x plus b. And on the left, I've still got g of x over root 37. We'll get g of x back by itself here shortly. But I, um, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and get, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by root 37. And I hope this is clear what I'm doing. This is a, a pretty basic algebra move where I multiply both sides by root 37. And that brings the root 37 over here. Okay? So again, what I effectively did is I multiplied root 37, root 37, up here on the previous step. Hope I didn't lose you with that. And the last thing I want to do, I basically got this down to single sinusoid, but the only thing is I've still got this b in here. I can't make up a, a, a variable and leave it in there in my, um, uh, uh, in my final answer. So I'm going to go back to my um, picture over here on the left. And I'm going to say, what is b? And I'm going to use my simple inverse trig. I'm going to say that b equals inverse tangent of the ratio 6 over 1. Now, I could have also said that b is the inverse cosine of 1 over root 37 or the inverse sine of 6 over root 37. Any of those would have worked. They all give us the same value. Um, now, our current, the current version of our textbook tends to use, I think, inverse cosine. Uh, maybe it's inverse sine. I don't know. I honestly have not been able to figure out why they don't use inverse tangent. That's always the one that I like the best because it avoids any ugly root symbols. And if I can do that, I would prefer to. But regardless, they all, are the, uh, they all work fine. So our final answer is g of x equals root 37 sine x. Plus, now this is where students sometimes get lost too, or I think a little bit confused. They see this, they, they see this tangent in, in there, and they think, why am I putting tangent in here? But I remind you, it's not tangent. It's inverse tangent. That's an angle. So again, really emphasize to yourself, that is an angle. And that also can be thought of as, our, um, as a horizontal translation. All right? That is our final answer. We have expressed the sum of sinusoids as a single sinusoid. Now, the only thing left to do is to verify graphically, confirm graphically. So uh, if you type them both into your graphing calculator, um, since we're expecting it to be the same graph, and we can see here that that's really two graphs laying on top of each other, but it's kind of hard to, to tell. So the table, I would argue, is your best means of confirming that you really did make uh, um, those two functions equivalent. All right, uh, let's have you try this one now. Now, once again, I'm giving you the option, or I've worded it such that you have the option of either using this, the sine, sum of sines formula, or um, sine of some formula, or you could do the cosine formula. Um, if you're feeling adventurous and, and feel like you got this, that's, I'd encourage you to try the cosine one, but, you know, sine one is all that I'm asking as a minimum. So pause the video at this point and give it a shot. All right, I'm trusting you've uh, done either the sine or the cosine version. 
Um, if you did the sine version, this is what you should have gotten. Square root of 29 as our new amplitude. And uh, x plus inverse tangent of 2 over 5. And again, reminding you that inverse tangent of 2 over 5, students have, have had trouble grasping in the past or have trouble remembering that that's an angle. And that's also giving our horizontal translation. So verified via calculator, looking at the table, looking at the graph. Now, if you did try the cosine um, version of this problem, you would have gotten something that looks more like that. All right, um, just to keep this video from going on for too much longer, I'm going to say that's basically it. And I'll just leave you with the final challenge if you're up to it. Um, originally, I was planning on doing this extra example, but that's going to take too long. Um, the extra example, too, I was going to just increase the level of difficulty just a bit by saying, what do you think would happen if you um, put 2x in there instead of x? And I'd invite you to use this other version of the sinusoids, which I didn't like as much. But notice that, remember how I always liked the version that had b on the outside and then a parentheses x minus h? Um, if you like, you may use this other one as well for this type of problem. But again, the main problem I want you to look at is, um, what, about, what do you do when that's a 2x instead of an x? Does that make a difference? How do you address that? Um, and I would ask you to do this one with cosine. Let me ask you to specifically do the cosine version of it. And again, rather than work this one out fully, I'll invite you to jump in if you feel up to it. Um, if you need a couple pointers, let me offer them here. Uh, first of all, remember that the cosine uh, version of this formula has the switching sign. So you either have plus minus or minus plus, and make sure you handle that carefully. But in either case, um, notice that, you're, that in either case, notice that the cosine terms are positive. However, in this problem, the cosine terms are neg or the cosine term is negative. So what I would have suggest you do is, as your very first step, factor out negative one from this right side. Factor it out and then have a big set of parentheses with the um, sinusoids in the middle of the parentheses. Uh, I think that's a, enough for a tip, uh, other than just observing the differences between the sine and cosine difference, sum and difference formulas. All right, good luck, and come on by to office hours if anything didn't make sense. Oh, um, actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and put the answer up here. So if you don't want to see the answer, stop the video at this point. But if you've tried this, and, um, or you're willing to try it and you want to see the answer, here it is. And once again, checked via calculator, but that is the answer. So good luck. Come on by if you, have, if you need help.